everyone, I'm Holly and I am the owner here at Missouri River Soap. I am the lead soap maker. One would say and I agree with that I am the only soap maker here at Missouri River Soap. I'm taking a little pause from my scheduled content, which is the rainbows. The mini rainbow extravaganza is coming up next. I'm taking just a little pause from that scheduled content for some soul soothing soap making. It's been a couple of months since I finished up the rainbow soap, so I just need to work on their supporting products. But first, I really need to get all the soaps made for the release after the mini rainbow extravaganza. So that's really my goal. However, I just needed to take a little bit of time to make some soap for me. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. Last week, I was taking a little bit of a break from packing all the orders from the last release and it was wonderful. And thank you all so much for your orders. It was just, it was amazing. Thank you. But then midweek, unfortunately, we did have to say goodbye to our Doberman Riggs. And I'm mentioning it here because he was mentioned and shown in Pack and Chat Part 4 and I know so many of you have been rooting for him and we thank you for that as well. We took a little bit of time off to kind of mend our hearts, process the situation and so this week I really felt up to making soap but I wasn't ready to jump into the big batches quite yet but I was really inspired to make these particular batches. So what I made was the lemon poppy seed soap. And then I also made this coffee soap. And I've made all sorts of different coffee soaps, but can you really have too many? I think not. So I do hope that you will enjoy this video. Roll that beautiful soap footage. So this first soap that I'm going to make is going to be a lemon poppy seed soap. And I have carrots, just some baby food carrots, and I have my essential oil blend. I have some powdered goat milk and buttermilk. And I do have some titanium dioxide and some mica in case I want it. So the first thing I want to do here is add in the additives. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the milk powders. I was not able to get my hands on some fresh goat milk and I do have a preference for the buttermilk and they both come from the health food store and I wasn't able to get them. So I decided to try the powders again today. I'm going to add in the baby food carrots. Such a nice pureed, um, very finely pureed carrots. I love doing it this way. I look for really good quality organic baby food carrots without any extra ingredients. And I'm going to get this blended in really well. This should be a really nice yellow soap as is, just from the carrots. They're not really orange, they go to a yellow in soap. And then with the essential oil, it should be a nice color. So I'm going to add in the lye solution, which is reduced from the water portion to accommodate the carrots. Because those are considered part of the liquid portion. Let's give this a nice blend. I can hear I still have some air bubbles in there, so I'm going to smack it around a little bit more. This stick blender is plenty powerful for this small amount of soap. This is a uh, 55 ounces of oil batch and it's going to fill up my five pound mold pretty nicely. So we're already at a light trace and I'm going to add in the essential oils and just see what this looks like. I 
I'm using lemon essential oil and litsia essential oil together. I think I want a little bit of an um, a creamier look, so I am going to add in a little bit of the titanium dioxide. Oh yeah, that's more of what I want. I'm going to add in some poppy seeds. So the batch needs to be thick enough that it will hold those seeds in. It's quite thin still, just barely at that light trace. But I suspect that it will thicken up fairly quickly. I have some just standard poppy seeds here that I'm going to pop in. This is not one I tend to make often because I find that not everybody likes the poppy seeds. I do use it in my calendula carrot. But I was just inspired, after having some lemon poppy seed muffins with my family, I was just inspired to make some lemon poppy seed soap. There's just something about the pale creamy yellow with the black poppy seeds. I just adore that. It's getting a little bit thicker now. And I do intend this to be a home soap. I'm not planning on listing this one for sale. We might put some out in some samples possibly, but for the most part, this is just gonna be for us. My children adore lemon poppy seed muffins and citrus scents, especially my daughter. So I thought this would be a, this would be a really fun one for her to be able to use in her bathroom. And of course it'll go great in the kitchen nice oh it's so good i do like to pour it a little thicker trace so i am going to just allow this to set for a moment i chose not to anchor this one today um citrus essential oils do have a tendency to fade now litsia is a really good one and it does hold pretty well the lemon isn't the best but the combination really seems to work but Again, this is for home, so I thought I would just test out this particular blend. And if I were gonna anchor it, I could also use some kaolin clay. I chose not to because for home soap, I, I don't know, I'm not a kaolin clay lover. I do add it into some of my soaps to help anchor those essential oils, but I don't always use it, so. And there are some people that have allergies to the kaolin clay, so either way, there's mixtures that you can do to anchor and also kale and clay does help to anchor some of those scents so this is starting to get to be a nice whoa a nice thickness look at that isn't it beautiful mm, i love it so much all right so this is looking very nice we're kind of in a medium trace now so I'm gonna go ahead and pour. And I do have another camera set up here on the side, so I'm kind of also focusing on it. So we're just gonna pour it right down the middle, I think. Oh, that is just so nice. Beautiful. I was so inspired to just make a simple soap. Oh, that's so nice. Now this mold is a little bit tall. My 
husband built them so that I could do a taller top if I wanted to and still be able to cover them. Mmm, <laughs> it smells so good. Oh my goodness, I can't get over it. So these molds that I'm using today are 18 inches long, two and a half wide, and they're uh, I think four and a half or five inches tall. But my soap bars typically are between 3.25 and three and a half inches tall before they cure. I just love that size. I don't want much of a texture on the top, but I do want to give it a little bit of movement. So I'm just going to take this iced teaspoon and just lightly push it in and pull it out. It's still very thin. It's not holding a big shape. And I like that. Just simple, luxurious, lovely soap. Now I think I will add just a little bit of poppy seed on the top, just to give it a little bit more of a note of the poppy seeds. Quite noticeable as is, but just a little bit. And I think I'm going to call that good. Let's take a look at it from a different angle. Some of these poppy seeds are sticking together a little bit. Oh, so nice. Just going to add in a little bit. There's a couple spots that are a little bare so that's what we're gonna do all right so here we have the lemon poppy seed soap oh, doesn't it just look so lovely mmm I love it all right I'm going to pause for just a moment and come back to make another batch of soap so I wanted to show you some new things I have here so I have a cute little silicone mat I'm not gonna move it just because it's it, it's stuck on there pretty good and then I found these little spatula holders. I thought that's going to be so nice when I make rainbow soap. So I guess I don't have, well, I have this one. So what you do, whoops, I'm still making a big mess. I just set it down like so. Isn't that cool? I am loving that. So this one is going to be a fun one. It is designed after how I take my coffee in the morning. I have been loving honey, like a honey coffee, like a honey, I'll probably call this like honey vanilla latte, but just mostly a sweetened with honey. And I used some cream and I just thought that every morning when I make my coffee, I'm like, I just want to make a soap like this. So that's what we're doing for this one. So into this batch, we're going to put in a coffee lye solution. And you can see there's still a bit of the coffee grounds in it. I have strained this already, but it's okay to have those grounds. I used an espresso, which is a very fine grind. And I just popped in a tablespoon or two into my lye solution and let it just kind of brew for me there and I did strain it and I could strain it again but I don't think I will I'm okay with those little bits going in so we're going to add in some cream and I am going to strain this because cream always has a little bit of a film a little skin on the top from just setting for a little bit I have my honey just some local honey and then this is super luxurious. This is coffee seed oil from Brambleberry. And I love this stuff. And I put it in my sugar scrubs, my coffee bean ice cream sugar scrubs. It is $13 an ounce. It is not inexpensive. But I just wanted to test it and see what it would do to this particular batch. This is some soul soothing soap making. And you know I'm for luxury too. So that's going to be fun to go in. 
All right, so we need to start getting some of this in and blend it up. I'm also going to put in just a little bit of Mocha Mica because I don't like when soap discolors funky. So I like to get it going. In fact, I think I'm only gonna do, yes, this is a half teaspoon, so I'm only gonna do half. It doesn't need much. I just want a little something to punch it up and look how beautiful that is. Can you see in there well enough to see how beautiful it is? I love mica, I love it. Now let's get in the honey. Now normally I would add honey to a little bit of water and heat it up in the microwave but I actually forgot to hold back enough water for that. So we're just gonna put it right into the oils. This is a home batch, this is an experiment, and I'll just see how it goes. And that is A-OK. -okay. I suspect this one's gonna overheat on me. We will see what happens. My coffee soaps tend to overheat as is. We're gonna put in the cream. We'll just blend all this extra stuff up at once. And see there, that's just the part I didn't wanna go in was all. I did not need to have to extra blend that part. I want this soap to have a little bit of a creaminess factor. So I am gonna use some titanium dioxide just pop in a little bit like so. And then let's put in this luscious coffee seed oil. It's so dark. I love this stuff. It smells amazing. If you love coffee, I don't know, maybe just get a little bottle of this and keep, keep it around just to sniff it. Oh, it smells so good. We're just gonna get this all blended up nicely. I'm gonna burp my stick blender and can tap it down. Sometimes swirling helps too. Look at that, oh my goodness, it's so fun to see all the different textures in there. I noticed my stick blender is a little bit quieter. I think my shaft part must be having a little bit of issue on my other one. So what I do when I find a stick blender I like, I usually buy two of them. And then I can switch out the shaft from batch to batch and I have an extra motor if I need it. Now I haven't done that with my big KitchenAid just because of it's, it's a little bit more expensive. But if you're just getting these little ones, that's what I suggest is getting two of them. And that way too, if your motor burns out on you or something like that, which it does happen, you can just quickly switch and you're still good to go. All right, so this is going to be the interesting part. I was feeling a bit lazy, so I decided not to brew any of the coffee separately. That's part of why I did it this way. So in with this wacky life solution. I did check around to make sure that it was acceptable to do such things. <laughs> Love and Soap has one, a little tutorial on coffee soap that showed that it was okay to do it in this manner. So scrape all this off. I don't want to lose anything. I already lost a bit in the coffee grounds, not much, but the ones I strained out already lost just a hint so let to get everything in there and relax a little bit So this is gonna darken a little bit and I am adding a little bit of a vanilla-based fragrance oil to it. So that is gonna darken it a little bit. I just love how this looks. Look at these, look at the speckles. I adore that. 
right, so I'm gonna add in my fragrance. Now this is a third of the fragrance needed. I just want it to be a light vanilla sweetness, just kind of in the background. I don't want it to be very strong. And this is actually vanilla pastry filling from Indigo Fragrance. I love this fragrance. I love it so much. It's like, you know, like the filling of a cream puff or something like that. So I just thought, let's see what this does. A lot of times it'll kind of bloom up a bright yellow color if it has a lot of vanilla in it. I'm seeing a little bit of a depth of color, but it's not too much. Oh, hallelujah. It smells so good. Now, the more we stick blend, the further along we move it, and that also creates heat. And I do want it to gel. That is my thought process here. However, if we just blend and blend and blend, sometimes it'll really get it going. So, since this has a tendency to overheat, we've got the honey, we've got the cream, we've got the coffee. This is probably going to overheat and it could get really interesting, but hopefully nothing worse than just some cracks. I probably won't cover it up too much. I probably will just put a little piece of cardboard over the top, but we'll see. I might have to come check back on it later and put a fan on it. We'll see. But for right now, look, it's just a nice, lovely trace. Look at that. Oh my. Oh, you know, I do love to make soap. So in just the short amount of time that I was showing off this texture to my other camera, it has gotten very thick. So we should get this poured in. So again, I'm trying to operate two different camera situations here. So let's do, woo she's getting thick. All right, here we go. Oh, mm, textures. We'll see how bad these little coffee grounds bleed. Sometimes they have a tendency to kind of bleed out. And that means they just kind of form a little halo around them. But since these have been sitting in the lye solution for so long, I just think it would be great to see how that effect is also. I was gonna make this soap yesterday and I kind of, I got prepped and I was just like, mm, not feeling it. I'm a moody soap maker. If I'm not feeling it, I know it's time to stop. So I stopped and I did put everything away. I put this light solution in the fridge just because it had the coffee in it and then got it out to for an hour or so to let it come up to room temperature a little bit. So again, I just wanna give it a little bit of a texture. Now this one is a little bit further along, so it is making more of an, um, a design in the top that it's holding. I'm just kind of dipping my spoon in, doing the same thing. It just makes a little bit more of an impact. I'll probably smack it down just so those settle just a little bit. I want it to be mostly a flat top. Kind of smoothing it out a little bit. Wasn't quite what I wanted. So we'll just give it just a, a little bit of a smoothing. Now I just want to put a little ground espresso on the top. Nothing significant. I have way more in here than I need. Just, just, a, just a little, you know, just to, once again, kind of like, hey, there's coffee in this soap. Mm. Sometimes you just need to make soap for yourself. Something small, something that 
you're inspired to make I'm inspired to make pretty much everything I do but and I do love making restocks but sometimes you know you get into that hustle and bustle of what you gotta make and sometimes you just need to make what you want to make for a minute oh this could not have gone better this is just soul soothing indeed look at that that lovely oh goodness all right thanks so much for watching this making portion i will come back my time in a day or two ish we'll see how i want to do it to unmold and cut these soaps all right let's unmold these beautiful soaps i have been so excited and normally i would unmold them a little bit sooner before i cut just so they can dry a bit more but I thought I'd save it and unmold it with you. Oh goodness, it smells so amazing. It makes me happy. All right, so this should come out as one piece because that's how I cut my liner. A little, a little snug still. There's one of these molds that is a little bit tighter. This is probably it. Oops. Okay. Alright, so here we have Lemon Bobby King. Oh, you're pretty. Look at that. Hello. <laughs> oh, man, it smells amazing. It's so pretty with all its speckles. Oh, look at it. It's lovely. But it is just a little bit, just a little tacky. So I may wait an hour or two before I cut this. So the coffee is looking really good. It did not discolor a whole lot yet. We'll see. I was hoping that that lowered amount of fragrance would cause it not to discolor a whole lot, but you know, we'll see. Sometimes the fragrances still do weird things and it did have a lot of vanillin in it. So I think 12%, so that's quite a lot. Come on, knife. Dookie. Oh, goodness gracious, I love to make soap. It's just my thing. There was actually a time I took a little pause from soap making, like as in, it was about a year. I was making hot process soap a lot and I decided I guess I didn't really like it that much. And then I came back and tried just doing cold process and we had a winner. <laughs> All right, let's see. Yeah, this one comes out quite a bit better. Let's peek at it. Oh, it's so pretty. It's the color of chocolate milk for a very well creamed coffee. Oh, it's so pretty. I do have a few shadows around here just from all the tripods and and things, but. I hope you don't mind too much. Oh, it smells amazing. Oh my goodness. I can smell it from, from here. So the same thing. This one's not quite as tacky as the other one because I did reduce my uh, water portion just a little bit on this one. So I'm still going to wait though. I have a couple other things I need to do today and film. So I'll just come back later. All right, let's go ahead and get this soap cut. Let's see how I wanna do this for us. I'm gonna slide it down for us. I like having this little end piece. Oh, it smells amazing. I'm just so pleased with it. <laughs> it's cute. Bars are a little bit shorter. I did that on purpose. I didn't want a super huge bar for us here at home. 
Doesn't it look great? Oh my goodness. I love this. It's so pretty and it smells amazing. That one, the poppy seed drug down a bit. That happens. Oh, these are so much fun. Just perfect. This turned out exactly as I'd hoped. So now for the rest of this one, I will go ahead and slide it. Let's see, I think that's the last wire I need to clean. Perfect. Mm. Mm -hmm. I just can't get over it. I love it. These are going to be perfect for us here at home. Just perfect. Alright, so now I clean off my cutter for the next one. I like to give everybody just a little clean up between batches. Again, it's just for us, so I don't have to be quite as particular, but I still like to. So here we go on the coffee batch. It'll be interesting to see if there's a discoloration border on these. Because usually fragrances with vanillin do discolor. Ah oh, yes, there is a little bit, but I actually prefer it. Let's see. And now this one was even shorter and I kind of love it. It's so cute. Oh goodness. It's just a little taller than a square. It's kind of like my, it's just good soap size. And the reason why this batch is a little bit smaller, even though it had the same amount of oils is because, um, this one had a little bit of reduced lye solution. So a little less water and also because it called for I believe it was three ounces of fragrance and I only used the one. It smells so good. It's just a very light fragrance. So far the coffee is looking amazing in there. I know I've got a little bit of a, well actually I'm not sure if I have a shadow going on because I do have a little bit of issue with my monitor and it's got kind of a smeary look. So sometimes I can't tell. I'm not sure what happened to that poor thing, but I had a little bit of an issue with my monitor on the camera one day. But anyway, what I'm getting at is that I'm looking to see if the coffee grounds are bleeding at all, kind of creating a different colored halo around each one. I'm not seeing it right now. May still happen. But I was thinking that perhaps it wouldn't be as pronounced because it did sit in the lye solution for so long. So yeah, I cannot wait to style my pictures for these. It's a very cloudy, rainy day here today. In fact, I think Sunday, today is a Friday. It's gonna be Sunday before I think we have any sun. I like to take pictures on sunny days because the window in my dormer area faces kind of northwest. So I really need it to be sunny to utilize some of that light into it. Otherwise, it can be just very dark. The discoloration line is actually quite light so far. But you can see on the very edges that the color is different. Can you See that? Notice that? I'm trying to get you in close. Hopefully that was focused. So it looks like the discoloration is going to be more of what here is here on the top, but we'll have to see. I'm 
I've made soap long enough to know that you can't count on that at this point, so we'll just have to see how it goes. So here we have the super cute coffee soap, honey vanilla latte, and the lemon poppy seed soap. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.